Hello everybody, in the last session we talked about layer 3 data centre interconnects and layer 2 data centre interconnects uh, where we covered some of the basics behind why you would want to use a DCI um, some of the pros and cons of each approach um, and some use cases what we're going to do is in this video is go into some more detail around how to uh, use BGP or why you would want to use BGP across a data center interconnect uh, and some of the pros and cons behind that. So in particular um, we're going to talk about eBGP between data centers, routing policy, preventing routing loops which I guess kind of come under the same category but we'll talk about that in a minute um, and then also the other, another reason why we might want to use BGP over an IGP is it's very good for um, if you want to put additional services in place between the two data centers. So um, let's just jump to the diagram and start uh, talking through some of the different options that we have available to us with BGP. So uh, if you look at the diagram uh, I'm about to draw a couple of bits in just to explain what we have. So we have here we have a uh, data center two. Here we have data center one, um, and then we have a legacy data center which we'll not really talk about too much in this video. Uh, that's there for another purpose. Um, we've got some routing requirements. Uh, because every design you actually need a purpose as to why you're going to um, implement a certain technology. Um, we're also we also have a couple of remote sites at the top and an MPLS L3 VPN service in the middle, which would be provided by a internet service provider. So, um, first thing that we're going to talk about is routing policy. And when we talk about routing policy, well, uh, this is a really high level explanation um, and we can go into further detail. If you want to do that, then contact me offline and we can uh, talk about how we can arrange that to happen. But in summary, if we, for example, have a requirement around this purple server, uh, now that could be a number of things. It could be that as indicated in these routing requirements that only this site is able to access that server. Um, it might be that uh, we want that server to be accessed over a certain path. So even though you would think that it would come down into the MPLS network and route directly into data center two, you might actually, for a specific reason, want to route the traffic down via data center one and across to uh, data center two this way. Um, and how we can achieve that is by using uh, BGP communities. Um, there's, you know, you can do it manually, but if you use BGP communities, then it's going to be um, a lot easier to achieve that goal. Um, the next thing that we might want to do with BGP is uh, from a design, remember this is a design perspective, okay? So the next thing that we might want to do, uh, or, or it might benefit us using BGP between data centers is, uh, I'll just keep the blue um, ink for this. If we, if we have this, let's say this server, and it's advertised via the, there's a LAN that's not pictured here in the diagram, but if it's advertised uh, and then redistribute it into BGP, um, it might uh, be sent out into uh, the MPLS and then advertised, you know, standard routing behavior. Um, and before it doesn't get redistributed uh, back out in, you know, into OSPF, it may just be advertised back over to this data center. Um, so what we can do is potentially tag this with, I don't know, 100 colon 10. So when it's advertised back into here, um, before we, uh, because all three of these 
routers are in the same IBGP domain, uh, this will be propagated throughout. But we might say, uh, you know, we already, uh, we, we can learn about the route, um, 100 colon 10, no problem, but do not send it over to this AS because it's just sending it back to where it's come from. So that's another another reason why you want, might want to use BGP over OSPF. I know that you can um, you can achieve that with OSPF or EIGRP, etc. But uh, it's a lot more difficult, and especially if you start thinking about, um, for example, in a data center environment, um, you might or might not have multiple VRFs. So if you do a configuration for um, uh, to, to block the traffic, uh, you might need to get into lots of complicated policies in order to achieve that in OSPF. For example, you would need a separate OSPF instance per uh, VRF unless you were using OSPF version 3. Um, but, you know, uh, it's more likely that you're using OSPF v2. Um, and the third sort of reason in this uh, high level video that you might want to use a DCI, let's say that we start off and all we're using the DCI for is uh, sending IPv4 routes. So we're using uh, IPv4 <coughs> unicast. And that's fine. Everything's working okay. Uh, no, no problems there. What we might want to do in the future though, let's say we have another requirement or we have um, a software defined data center project and there's a, you know, a fabric here and a fabric here that we're uh, rolling out. And <clears throat> there might be a requirement for layer two over this uh, layer three data center interconnect or we might want to um, use EVPN for example so if that was if, if we had a traditional data center environment and somebody said to us now we need to stretch layer 2 between the data centers and this is normally how these things come about is uh, teams don't talk to each other and then a proof of concept or something has been done in a site and then they say oh yeah but we actually want to split it between data centers and then the network team normally have to accommodate for that and they just plumb a VLAN or get OTB set up or whatever. Um, so that's that's quite a bit of, uh, let's say for example in that scenario uh, uh, you, are, you had like a routed link between these two data centers and then somebody came along and said uh, now I want you to uh, give me a layer 2 VLAN it would be quite difficult well it wouldn't be difficult but you know it would, there would be disruption because you need to take that out of service that out of service and anything else that was travelling on that layer 3 link at the time um, would would uh, would need to be rerouted and then that leads into like your wider routing design where if you're like blocking things from going over that way uh, or coming in from that way or whatever then you might it might not be as, as straightforward as that. So, <clears throat> um, what uh, we do with BGP is we enable additional address families. So, if you think of BGP as like a big um, pipe, if you like, um, over it's a TCP connection. Uh, most of you will know this, some of you might not, but it's a TCP connection with. Um, so between these two, these two neighbors, we have uh you know this TCP connection, and that TCP connection then we have to go into what we call address families, um, and activate services. So, in the example that I gave, we are uh, we are running IPv four unicast, which is basically root uh, IPv four routing table uh, between the two um, we might at a later date want to activate uh, multi -V uh, well let's say EVPN to route MAC addresses 
So what we do is we go under the, the BGP routing process, we go router BGP 20 at this side, router BGP 10 at this side, and we go address family EVPN or whatever the syntax is, activate the neighbours, which makes it then look like this. And after that, we uh, put any additional configuration relevant to that address family. Then at a later date, if, for example, we wanted to enable IPv6 unicast, um, we go router BGP uh, 20, router BGP 10, um, and we create a address family IPv6 unicast and so on uh, and we can do the same for uh, things like um, vpn v4 uh, and and you know l2 vpn etc etc so those are really the main benefits behind um, using bgp as a as a data center interconnect at a high level um, hopefully that was informative um, and it gave you some better idea as to how and why we would use BGP between two data centers. We can provide further information if you want to uh, find a way how to do that. Contact me at, uh, or us at designteam at mnbnetworks.tech and we can talk about how we can uh, take this discussion forward. Uh, hope to see you on the next video and speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.